What's happening, Rusty? Can you hear me and see me okay and everything there? Rusty, you want to let me know? Right, great, thank you. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and joining me here again tonight. Uh, let's start with a little roll call. Where's everybody from? And in case you couldn't tell by the uh, the title and the awesome thumbnail that I did for it, um, what we're going to be doing is replacing the um, uh, the volume. Uh, the volume pot emitter in in this guitar. So, if you if you've been on here, you know for the last while, you've you know heard me complaining about it. <laughs> yeah, it 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 is. It is. It's like you're like my Ed McMahon. You're like the only one here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you've heard me, you know, bitching about this, that it, it's cutting out and it's actually, you can actually lift it up. It's like the, it's come loose on the inside where the, where the shaft is actually lifting up and down. So it's making the contacts raise up and down and causing all kinds of problems and stuff. So uh, I thought this would be a good thing that we could do is I could show you guys how to, um, how to replace one. It's, um, on most guitars, it's really not that difficult to do. Uh, a lot of people get intimidated by it when they have to solder and stuff. Uh, I literally suck at soldering. I mean, my solder, you know, it holds together everything, but it's not all pretty. You know, sometimes it, uh, I've got guitars of mine that I've rewired. Because if I'm doing it for a customer, I'm a lot more thorough. But if it's my own, I just want it to function. So sometimes you'll take the cover off and it, it, it just looks like maybe a bird shit, in, like a bunch of bird shit inside the cavity because my soldering doesn't look all that great. But I'll try to do good tonight. Uh, yes, it will make the sound scratchy. So like if you're, if you, uh, if your pot's going bad, like when you turn it, you'll hear like crackling and stuff. So you can actually clean them. There's um, uh, maybe we'll do that on another video. Like we'll go through and like I'll take one that don't need to be replaced and uh, and I'll just clean it and show you how you can do that. Now it's not loose wiring. It's it's actually the pot emitter itself is actually just going bad. Um, I probably have to replace these on my guitars more than most people because I'm like uh, especially live. I don't, you know, do volume swells and stuff like that, but that's basically how I kill the guitar for, you know, silence in between songs or like in parts where there's a rest is all this hurry and, you know, turn it up and down and I end up kind of beating on them and they end up getting kind of screwed up. So I'm going to show you guys how to, uh, how to replace it. So, you know, if you, um, you need to replace one in your own guitar, you can save a few bucks by doing it yourself. Well, more than a few bucks, it's getting pretty, uh, it's getting to be kind of 
well, it's just like everything else is going up. So it's getting pretty expensive. Like the labor rates and stuff for repairs and stuff at a lot of the places around here are like really expensive, in my opinion. Um, so let me turn my soldering iron on so it can warm up. So I wanted to, this didn't exactly work out exactly the way that I wanted to do this. So um, as you can see, there's already a wire on here. On the, This is the one that I'm the one I'm putting in. This is a brand new pot. It's just that it was already in a guitar. So uh, let me explain. Um, uh, the Spear Guitar Warehouse used to actually be here in my town. So I actually had a job for him for a while doing uh, quality control on, on guitars that get shipped out. So if there would be guitars, sometimes they would they would be just, you know, just more or less get destroyed in shipping. Um, so if that was the case, they would just, you know, they just said to throw them away. So what I started doing is disassembling them and then just saving stuff like this. So I've got like bags and bags, like garbage bags full of switches and pot emitters and pickups and all kinds of different parts. Like I'll probably never have to buy an item ever, but I do have some brand new pots that I wanted to show you one of those. Um, the reason I'm not actually using a brand new one is because this is all the solder that I have left. <laughs> so if I was using a brand new one, this wouldn't be enough. So um, here in a second, I'll remove this wire and then I'll show you what it is that you would have to do if you were actually going to put in a brand new one. There's just one step that we're not doing today that we would have to do. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and just start disassembling this. So uh, let me see here if I can get that, if I can, zoom in like I did before. Uh, it doesn't, oh, wait a minute, there it goes. For some reason, this controller thing is being like really laggy. So bear with me. Okay, here it goes. All right, let's see how that, yeah, that should probably work for right now. I'll adjust more if I need to in a minute. All right, so um, first thing is we need to remove the, um, <laughs> you can see what I had for lunch, yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to re want to remove the knob. So depending upon how the, if it's just a press on knob or some of them actually have like on the side, there's like a little, like a little hole where you have to put in a, uh, a little tiny screwdriver or maybe an Allen uh, key or something to, to uh, remove it. But this one, it's just a press on one. So what you can try to do is just grab it and just pull it off like that. So this is a metal cap, you know, this has a metal cap on it. So it, it's pretty easy to do that. But if you've got a guitar like a, um, like maybe a Les Paul or something where it's plastic, sometimes if you grab onto them and go to pull them off, they'll break. So if, if that's the case, um, let me just put this back on. If that's the case, then, then you can take a flathead screwdriver and you want to come in on the side, but you want to be careful because you don't want to pry against the body of the guitar because you could, you know, you could damage it. So um, this one doesn't quite sit down all the way down on there. So there's actually enough room that I can get under there and put the screwdriver on top of, um, you can see on top of this new one here, there's a, there's a nut on there. So I'm going to put the, you could put the screwdriver there on top of that and just kind of turn it to the side, work it a little bit, rotate the pot around, work it a little bit and just kind of work it off. So you don't end up breaking it. Cause those, those plastic ones that are like on Les Pauls and stuff are really, really brittle. Yeah. You could, you know, you could put tape off on there, but a, a, a real simple thing to do is just get a, uh, 
like a rag, you know, like we've talked before about how you rag like your strings off, wipe the guitar off, just put it there so that way you have something between the body and that. So anyhow, on this one, luckily I can just pull it off. And not to mention it's probably wore out because I've had it off about 10,000 times. I've had this guitar for uh, I'm going to say like maybe eight years. And I have replaced this um, volume potometer. This is like the sixth time, I think. And like I said, it's just because I'm like, I'm like super hard on them. Okay. So uh, after, after you get that off, um, then we, we need to loosen up this, uh, this nut that's holding it on. Now, the thing of it is that when you go to turn that, the whole thing can turn and you don't want that to happen because if the whole thing rotates and then it rotates inside the cavity, it can pull on the, um, uh, on the wiring and actually pull the wiring apart. I'm going to take the back, the, the back cover off this so we can actually see that and show you what I'm talking about. So just for this, just like we did before, this one, it's just got uh, four Phillips head screws. And during the time when I'm just like taking this stuff apart, or if anybody's got any questions um, about this or just other guitar related stuff, uh, lay them on me and uh, maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. All right, so now that I got the the uh, the cover off of it, so you can see here's the back side of the pot under it. You can see the wiring on there. So you don't want that rotating inside of the cavity because, like I said, it could damage uh, the wires. So what I'm going to do, and I'll probably get criticism for this, um, but, you know, hey, it's YouTube, and that's what, you know, can't do anything on here without getting criticism, right? Uh Ideally, you know, you'd want to have a wrench that's that size, but I've always just, I've just, this, this little pair of pliers right here has been my go-to for doing this. So we're going to be turning this counterclockwise, righty, tidy, lefty, loosey, right? So since, if I'm going to be turning this counterclockwise, then the whole pot emitter is going to want to turn counterclockwise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the knob, uh, Let's see. I always do this backwards. I'm going to turn it so it's turned all the way down. I might be doing this backwards. We'll find out here in a second. Come on, camera, focus. So what... Uh, let see if I can get in closer. Okay. All right, cool. So I've got this, this really small flathead screwdriver that, as you can see on the, the top of the, whoops. Oh my gosh, this is weird. On top of the powder, there's that little notch in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this screwdriver into that little notch. So that way I can hold it. Okay, so yeah, I need to be all the way turned up. So I've got the volume knob like turned all the way up and I'm going to hold it with this screwdriver. And then when I go to turn this nut, that will hold the pot emitter in place. So the nut will turn, but the whole pot won't unwind. Come on, camera, focus. The whole pot won't unwind, um, you know, and like I said, you know, you know, possibly damage the, uh, the wiring or um, you could actually damage the, the contacts on the pot too. I mean, this one I'm not worried about because this is just going in the garbage, but if you were just taking it out for some other reason. All right. So there's a little, there's a little, it's weird. Everything's backwards. Uh, there's a little nut and a washer here that you got to remove. And then the pot just will just push down inside of the body of the guitar. 
So now it's loose in here so I can uh, I can pull it out. Now it's going to have the wiring still attached to it, obviously, but I'm just going to pull, pull it out here. Now, sometimes there's these little, these little uh, lock washers that are in there and they just have like these kind of like little teeth on it and it kind of digs into the wood to keep the, to keep it from coming loose. Um, sometimes there's more than one, they'll stack them. So there was two in here. So what you want to do is make sure that you, you get them out and that uh, you put them both back in. Now you, it's possible that you'll go buy a, you'll go buy another pot emitter and it will, the shaft will be a little bit longer. It'll be something a little bit different on it. So you might have to add an extra one or take one away, you know, just depending upon what, uh, what you've got going. Okay. So now let me get these wires off of this, uh, this old one here. I got to put my other glasses on so I can see up close. Okay, so if this was if this was brand new, God, I gotta try to get from on the camera. These little uh, connector things here would actually be just sticking out straight, and they just kind of bend them back so they're not there isn't a it's not taking up a lot of space inside of the the cavity. Some guitars you'll get back there, and it's it's like they've routed it so you can barely get a pot emitter in there. Now. Uh, one thing that you'll have to do if it was a new one, and I'm trying to get it to where the camera will focus on this so you can see it, but I'm having a, I'm having a hell of a time here getting it to, maybe I need to zoom back out. Let me. Okay, yeah, that's that's a little better. Apologize for this. It's like it's really hard to try to get the camera to focus on it. But you can see that this over here has actually been bent over and it's soldered to the actual casing of the pot emitter itself. So it doesn't come that way because this could be a volume pot. You could be using this for a volume. You could use it for tone. It's just a, a, a pot emitter. So you have to, when you, how you know to do it is that when you're looking at it, this you know so you're you know you're you're looking at it straight from the back and you can see the three spades you want to take the one that's on the left and bend it and solder it to the back of the uh the housing and for those of you who may have just uh joined the reason that i didn't use a new one is um because i i didn't realize that i only have this much solder left so i don't have anywhere near enough to put a new one in there and i have a whole bunch of these ones that are brand new like takeoffs um so i'm going to use i'm going to use this one now the other thing that you want to do that when you um before you buy the pot emitters you need to know what its um resistance is so i don't know if you're going to be able to read on the back of there Yeah, I, I don't think you'll be able to read it, but it says it says 500k. So um, you may have one in your guitar. It might the pot that's in there might say 500k or it might say 250k. You want to make sure you get the same one. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that's basically you know all there is to it. You know, you just solder this post too. Like you can see right here, it's actually soldered right there on the side. Oh, that actually cleared up pretty good. Oh, maybe that's how you do it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. 
And see right there, it says uh, 500K. It says B500K. So uh, you would want the, you want to replace the same one. If your guitar has a 500K pot, put a 500K pot. If it's a 250K, put a 250K in. <clears throat> oh, and I didn't even notice this. It actually says it on this side and much easier to read where it says 500K. Um, yeah, so after you um, after you get to this point where we've, we've removed it from the front, we've got the back off, and we've got it out here where we can kind of uh, work with it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the wires that are on here. So I've done, you know, a gajillion of these things. So I, I know where the wires go, but if it's like the first time you've done it and you're not sure where they go, you know, there's tons of wiring diagrams uh, on the internet and stuff, but uh, I would recommend either drawing uh, a, a, uh, your own little diagram of what how yours is set up or even better is just get, get your cell phone out and take a picture of it so that way you know for sure which wires went where because you can see on here there's um there's two white wires and there's two yellow wires one set of the white wire or one set of the yellow and white wires is going down through here which goes to the input jack and then the other one I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Yeah, it's, it's hard to see, but the other one, the other one in this case is actually the, the body ground. It's uh, going from, it's going through a hole in here and it's actually attached underneath your bridge. That's why like, you know, if you notice that like your guitar will be humming and then as soon as you touch the strings, it's quiet and then you let off it. it that's because it's grounding through you. Um, so it's important that that, that wire is hooked up. I have a 500K Liberator. Uh, yeah, liber 500K liber Liberator. I'm not... I know the 500K part, but the Liberator... I'm not sure what, what that is. Okay, so now... Let me zoom back... Oh, the solderless ones. Yeah. Um, uh, is it, do you have EMG pickups? Um, I have a guitar that has EMGs and I have a Jackson that's got EMGs in it. And you actually, you don't solder anything. It's got like a little board in there with like little pins and you actually have to plug stuff onto it. The first time I wired a guitar like that, I, I, I hated it. But now that I'm used to it, it's actually pretty good. Okay, so let me try to see if I can zoom back in. Yeah, that should work. Got a Jackson with a single DiMarzio Hummocker from something else. It's a, Fr a Frankenstein guitar. Yeah, I've got, uh, and I've had a few of those. My, If you were here when I was showing my electric guitars a couple of weeks ago, my Stratocaster, um, that poor thing, you know, I mean, I didn't even have it for, I didn't have it in my possession for more than like six hours before it was, it was gutted and routed for humbuckers and back routed so I could pull the tremolo sharp. I did all kinds of crap to it. Kind of now, in a way, I wished I hadn't of, but you know, it's the stuff you do when you're young. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna remove these wires. Whoa, I'm gonna burn my guitar on the uh, on the soldering iron. I usually am not sitting here when I'm doing stuff like this, so. All right, so when you're when you're when you're soldering to remove, God, I wish the the lead on this thing was longer. Um, 
so like this one here, this ground wire that's going to the, uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Okay, I guess that's pretty good. It's about as uh, good as it's going to get. No, I don't use, I don't run a tone pot on, um, on like my Les Pauls and stuff. I just leave them the way they are. But guitars like, you know, configurations like this, they're like a Stratocaster. I hate having the volume knob right there. I'm constant. It's just in my way. I hate it. And I don't ever really use it on, um, for the guitars like this, it's like, from, you know, on my metal bands, I don't really use the tone pot. So I just remove it and then relocate the volume pot down here. So it's just out of the way. All right. So now we've got this, there's, you know, solder right there where that ground wires on. So I'm just going to take the, the soldering iron and put it on there. And this is going to take a little bit longer because it's a huge surface that we're heating up as opposed to just being a little one. Oh, and it came off already. Okay, so that wire's off. Now, we've got, oh, and there's a black wire on here too. I'm blind. So this black wire here is the one that's actually going to your switch. So we just need to pay attention. So the, the each one of these wires is a dual lead wire. So this yellow one, it has a little skinny white wire on the inside of it. And then it's, um, it's a shielded wire. So it's surrounded with, um, uh, with more wire. So the outside wire is going to be is ground. And then the, the one in the middle is a signal wire. So, oh, you do the same thing. You remove your, your tone pot and relocate your volume. Uh, yeah, so the little black one that's going to the switch, the lead on it is going to go to the, um, uh, the outside spade. And then the one coming from the input jack is going to go to the one in the center. So the yellow to the center and the black one to the outside. And then the other one is the one that's, that's soldered to the, uh, the uh, body or, you know, the, the casing of the, uh, uh, of the pot. So these ground wires here, I'll get them first because you got to heat, you know, you got to heat this up pretty good to get them to come off uh, a lot of times. If it's a brand new pot, I actually don't even use this soldering iron. I've got a bigger one that I like to use for that, that um, my dad gave me it was actually a soldering iron that was that was for it was built for repairing radiators auto, car radiators back in the day when they were made out of metal but and it's got a the the end on the thing is as big as my thumb so i mean it's it gets super hot and it makes it really easy to solder big stuff like this sometimes these small soldering irons if you're trying to solder something big it just doesn't get hot enough That's why I can't see. I forgot to put on the switch to my better glasses. Okay. So I got the, the old one off. And as you can see, it's also a 500K pot. It's actually the, the pot that I'm putting in it more than likely came out of the same exact guitar. <laughs> All right, so that pot's junk. I'm going to throw it away. But I am going to save the, the uh, washer and the nut and the... Uh, the lock washers. This kind of stuff is just really good to kind of hang on to because you you know you never know when you might you know need it. 
So this new one's already got, uh, it's got the nut, the thing. It's, it looks, this one's got three lock washers. And it's also got a, oh yeah. So there's another thing. Sometimes too, they'll be, they'll be double nutted because if the, depending upon the, the body of the guitar, if the shaft is too long, you can use that to shim it down. If it's, if it's protruding out of the back of the, uh, um, if it's, if it's protruding out of the face of the guitar too, too far, you can, you know, kind of fine tune it, but I don't believe I'm going to need it because I didn't have one on the other. I'm going to take it off and just compare these to make sure that they are the same length. And they are, like I said, it probably came out of, uh, it probably came out of uh, one of these models guitar possibly. Okay, I'm just inspecting it to make sure that everything looks looks kosher on it. There isn't any issues. Everything looks good, so this should this should work good. All right, so now just pre kind of straightening out the these pieces of wire, twisting them together so they're not just, you know, poking out all over the place. Because something that, that you want to make sure that you do is that, like the this inner wiring here for the uh, the ground, is that if you have you you don't want it to be like frayed because if just one of the little strands touches uh, like one of the signal points, it can it can actually ground it out and just and just kill it, make it not even. Uh, not even work. All right. So first one do I'll do here is I'm going to do the center because that's the one going for the input jack. Yeah, this is, this is going to be difficult. Like I said, I don't normally just do this in my lap. I do it on a, a I have a, a bench, but it would have been like a gigantic pain in the ass to have to have moved everything. So I'll do the best I, I can here. Not close enough. Just want to be able to get it so you can still see, you know, what the hell I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to go on to this center one. So put my soldering iron on there. And I start, you know, just heating it up. Solder will start to melt. You don't want to get it too hot. You don't want to like melt, melt everything, but you got to get it hot enough that you don't, um, that your solder actually solders. You don't want to get, they call a cold solder because they'll, they'll fall apart. So I'm getting that hot move over my wire into the kind of scoop the solder around so it's covering it up give it just a second and boom we're in business we got that one on okay so now i'm going to take the one that's coming from the switch and do the same thing now you see i'm not doing the grounds yet because uh i'm going to try to do them kind of at the same time. Okay, so those are both good. Those are both on there. So what that leaves then is the the shielding part here. We've got a we've got a solder on here onto the back of the pot, and then we've also got a solder on this uh, yellow wire here. That's our ground that's going to the bridge.
Oh, damn it. Remember I was just saying about that cold solder thing? I just broke the solder that I did. I didn't wait long enough. I got impatient. So the one for the uh, switch, I got to do, I'm going to redo it again. So again, I'm just going to heat it up. I need an extra arm. Okay, so that's back on again. Right, I gotta switch glasses to see if there's any new. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely you want uh, you want good solder, and there's different kinds of solder depending upon what you're what you're doing where these are just the wires. I'm just using this, this just real thin silver solder, but I've got, um, I've got some other solder over there. That's like thicker. And it actually, it's a, it's a, uh, a rosin core solder, um, for, for, well, if it's a brand new pot, I'll actually use that when I'm soldering to the back, when I'm doing the grounds to the back, but this already has a dab of solder on there. Plus there's still solder on these wires. Cause this is, like I said, this is probably the sixth time I've replaced this pot emitter in the last uh, like eight years. Um, this one should last quite a while because I ain't gigging right now. So it isn't getting the, you know, the shit beat out of it like it usually is. Okay, I'm having issues with that one. That one wire, I think I am going to have to put a dab of this on there because it just does not want to stay. Okay, hopefully that'll be better. This is honestly like one of my least favorite things to do. <laughs> uh, if I could afford to, you know, afford to, I would just anytime there's something wrong, I would just bring it to somebody else. Uh, but since I play guitar for a living, I, I can't afford to do that. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to try to do here. Like I said I want to try to do these all at the at the same time. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of getting them lined up. That one I'm going to have to do separately. The wire is too short. Okay, so since this is you know big, when we when I heated it up to remove it. It didn't take as much heat as it's going to be to reattach it because I got to get it. I got to get it hot enough that it's gonna that it's gonna stick. Now it looks like there's something new here to read. Let me see. Switch glasses every five seconds. There's always a constant stream of obstacles when I'm soldering. Yeah, there's always this. You're you're exactly right. It's it's good to know that I'm not alone in this. It's some guitar. My guitars. I've kind of got them all to where everything's kind of routed okay but um sometimes there you get in there and it's just a it's just a mess and it's they'll they'll cut the wires to where it is exactly long enough to reach where it is they don't give you any wiggle room i mean you don't want to have like you know like a a foot and a half extra wire in there but god like a half an inch extra wouldn't kill you Auto mechanic. All right, so I just got that on there right now. I'm just getting it heated up.
yeah, living, living auto collision refer. Oh, cool. Um, I used to be an auto mechanic. Um, I used to rebuild engines. Which, okay, I got this hot enough. I got to change my glasses. I got to be able to see what I'm doing here. Yeah, I, I did, I did that for a long time. Um, rebuilt engines, uh, And then just did, I, I rebuilt engines for a long time. And then I started having some health issues and it, it was, uh, it was too much. It was too physically demanding. And then I switched over and, uh, went to another shop and I was just doing like front end alignments and brakes and just easy shit like that. And then I just got to where I couldn't do that anymore. And now I just kind of do it as a, as a hobby. I've got, uh, um, I've got a couple of project cars that me and my son, you know, work on and stuff. What did I do with those pliers? Co. Oh, so this is something else you can do too. Sometimes you get in here and when you when these little short wires like this, they start getting hot as hell and they're hard to hold on to. So if you just get that little pair of needle nose pliers, then you can use that to like hold the uh uh shit. To hold the wire in place for you so you don't have to try to, you know, roast your fingers to do it. And this, I'm going to have to put just a dab of that solder. Where did I put it? God. Okay. Man, this is being like a kind of a biatch but i guess it's just because i'm trying to do it on camera and in a really kind of kind of a dumb spot to be doing it All right, so I just got this last one to put on here, which is this that uh, ground wire going to the bridge. All right, so everything is soldered up now. I gotta let that cool off because it is way too freaking hot to touch to put it back in the. Uh, in the guitar cavity. Street rod fab. That's cool. I, fabrication was something that I always wish that I could have gotten better at. Uh, <laughs> there's a channel, there's a car channel, maybe you watch, it's called Throttle. T-H-R-O-T-L. You watch that show, a YouTube show. Yeah, it's still hotter than second floor of hell. We're going to let that just sit there for just a minute. All right, so I think I can put it back together now. Okay, so now this is the thing that when you're going to put it back together. If you've got a lot of crap in the way, like here, like I said, I've, I've got my cavity. It's pretty empty. I don't have a lot of extra, you know, bullshit in there. Like a lot of guitars do. Um, 
but if you have a lot of stuff and you're having to try to feed that around there, just be careful when you're moving the wires, you know, you don't want to like end up breaking a wire on the switch when you're trying to, you know, put in a new pot or, you know, vice versa. So since I know that the two washers that were on here, the uh, lock washers that were on here before work, I'm going to use them. I already know that they're, I ain't going to have any issues if I use them. So when you look at these things, on one side it's flat, and then on the other side it's got these little kind of, you know, little teeth sticking up. You want those little teeth things to be going towards the guitar, because what they do is they kind of dig into the wood just a little bit to help it, um, to keep the pot from uh, spinning inside of there. So since I got two of them, I'm going to put the flat sides back to back. So that way I can have a little bite against the face of the pot and a little bite against the uh, guitar. Yeah, I've seen a lot of guitars from the factory that were wired pretty, pretty bizarre. In fact, I, I did one. It was an Epiphone Les Paul for a student a week or so ago, and it wasn't wired bad, but it was wired really weird. The uh, Instead of having just the leads from the pickup come through and then the wires coming off, you know, going onto the switch, it was all plugs. So at the end of the pickup, it had like a little plug and then coming off the switch, a little plug, and you just plugged everything together. I thought that was really kind of weird. All right, so I'm going to slip those washers on. And now when you go to put them down in there, they're going to, they're going to probably fall off. So now you're just going to have, you know, play a little game of trying to get everything to line up. Sometimes this right here is the, the biggest pain out of anything is just trying to get back down in there without losing your watcher. And I got them first try. Look at me. All right. So now you can see that it, it's back down in there and you want to have those, those connectors. So they're out here. You don't want the thing turned over like that, where they're pressing up. You want them to where they're not going to have anything coming in contact with them. So now I can just hold that in place, come around to the front side and put my washer back on and the nut. Okay, I'm going to just turn this up as, as fast as I can, or as fast, as tight as I can with my fingers. Yeah, I'm going to do as fast as I can. I'm going to turn it in as tight as I can with my fingers, and then come around to the back and look and make sure that the wires are coming through and, you know, they're coming out here and not coming off to the sides, you know, where they're going to hit anything. So now that I know that it's in place and it's kind of stuck there, now we'll just do the opposite of what I did when I took it apart. Now I'm going to turn the volume knob all the way down. Put my little screwdriver in there and then kind of just use the screwdriver to kind of hold it so it when I start tightening this that the it doesn't want to make the whole pot emitter rotate. So I got to hold it a little bit tighter because it's trying. Okay. You don't want to tighten these things down to the point that you, that you crush the wood. Um, and, and that might be part of the reason why I use this instead of a wrench, because there is no way you're going to get enough, you know, it just, it slips before you could possibly get enough leverage to really be able to squash it down like that. All right, so before you put everything all back together, let me. There we go. Before, whoa. Why? There we go. Um, 
before you get everything all put back together, you want to you want to check it, make sure that that it worked. Because uh, if I check it right now, hopefully, since I'm on li I'm, I'm live on the internet, it's going to work, and I'm not going to look like a dumbass. Uh, but if you put everything back to shit, it ain't going to work. You'll have problems. <laughs> Murphy's law. So I'm going to plug it in. Oh, and just one thing. If things start cutting out, it's not because it, because it didn't work. It's because of this cord. Check this out. I've never seen this happen to a, uh, to a guitar cable before. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But can you see that that moving? This whole tip part is like come apart and it's 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 not threaded or anything, and it's it's just actually coming out of this. So it, it kind of cuts out a little bit. And I know that that isn't what the problem is because th th this pot emitter did it on every on everything. I just need to this is a guaranteed cable. I just need to bring it back and and exchange it. Looks like we're in business. All right, so as I drop my guitar pick. So the operation was a success. All right, so now I can just finish putting it back together. So I'll just go ahead and take my uh, knob. Press that back on, put the little cavity cover back on. And put the shit. Put the uh, screws back in. All right, we're done. Got a pot emitter that works again. You can't pull, you know, pull. it was acting like it was a push-pull pot when it actually wasn't. All right, so does anybody have any questions about any of this that we've, you know, that we've gone over or just other guitar questions in general? Because we are just about out of time. So earlier, uh, Jersey Red said something about, you know, like if the if the if the pot is crackling. So you might have like when you turn your, you know, it works, the volume goes up and down, but when you turn, it's like a bunch of crackling, you know, staticky sound. So when that happens, you don't necessarily need to replace the pot emitter, you just need to clean it. So you can do this while it's in the guitar, but I'll just show you on this one because since it's out of the guitar, this is the old one. So when this is in the guitar, when you look down at the cavity, this is all you can see is this back part of it, right? Because it's sitting, you know, like my fingers were the body of the guitar. Well, if you look right there, you see how there's that little opening between the spades, those little black things? That's actually openings. So what you can do is you can buy um, stuff like this. I used to buy this crap at Radio Shack, but they're all gone now. So um, somebody gave me this one. I'm not sure where they got it, but I'm imagining that you can just, you know, you can buy it online on Amazon or something, but it's just um, electronics cleaner or pot cleaner. So while this is still in the guitar, you can just take that nozzle and go down in there and just spray some in there. It's a lit, you know, it just sprays out like, like if you were spraying, you know, like WD-40 or something. And then you can grab the, uh, grab your knob and just sit there, turn it back and forth 
a whole bunch, just keep turning it back and forth. It will feel, it won't, it won't feel like it has as much resistance on it as it did because the, if you've ever taken one of these things apart on the inside of it, when you, when you turn this, it's basically, there's just like a, a wheel in there, like a little, like a, like a sprocket on a bicycle. And then there's little contact things that those, you know, mix the contacts with. Well, they put, they put dielectric grease in there and then over time just dust and everything collects and it just messes up the connection. Well, that dielectric grease causes resistance. Well, when you spray this shit in there, it dissolves it and then you don't have that resistance anymore. Um, the first time I did it, I thought, oh my crap, you know, I've ruined it, but it, it's, it still works just fine. Anyway, that'll make that nine times out of 10, you can get rid of that crackling sound by doing that. You can also do it with your switch. If you have a switch that pops or maybe sometimes that, like that's the other thing I'm pretty hard on is switches. So when I play, you know, playing live and stuff, I'm using this switch all of the time. Um, like generally, like if I'm doing rhythms and stuff, I'm on this pickup, but a lot of times when I solo, I like to switch to the neck pickup. So this is a three-way switch, you know, in the middle's both. Well, I don't want both. I either want one or the other most of the time. So I'm constantly you know, jamming that switch and I end up breaking them. Uh, but what will happen is it'll be like, you'll go to switch it into one position and your guitar is just dead. And then if you kind of wiggle the switch around, then all of a sudden it'll work. So it's the same idea. It's just a bad, it's just a bad connection from crap inside of there. So you can do the same thing on your switch. You can spray it. Uh, I'm not sure what's in it, but it, it really, it works. Staples. You can get the stuff at Staples. That'd be sick if you could get it at Staples because they're like literally right down the street from me. I mean, I've still got enough here. I'm, I'm probably good for a while. Uh, but yeah, you can, you know, you can clean this stuff instead of just, instead of replacing it a, a lot of the time. Um, the, uh, I could have showed you how to replace the switch, I guess, but I'd already replaced the switch in this about two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> during actually one of these live streams, I went to flip the switch and it just died. So I, I put a new one in. Oh no, this isn't the air. This isn't just air. This is like an actual liquid comes out of this is like an aerosol. Like I said, it's like a WD 40 kind of a thing. Now that being said, some people think that you can use WD 40 for everything that, you know, it's just the, the miracle, uh, you know, miracle stuff. And it's good. It's, you know, it's, it's good for what it, for what it is, but you know, you, it doesn't work for everything and don't use it spray inside your, your stuff because it, it, it's just going to screw it up. It's, it's not good for that. Uh, my dad is one of them guys that he thinks that WD-40 is the answer to everything. And I mean, I've literally seen him spray it into his eye before. And I mean, it's, it's nuts. Uh, I mean, he's not, and he's not blind and he's like almost 90 years old. So I guess he's doing something right. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the secret that WD-40 is good for is uh, longevity. But yeah, that's how you, uh, that's how you change a uh, potimeter. So, um, does anybody have any questions or anything aside from Jersey red? Cause he, it looks like he is like 98.98% 98 .98 of the, uh, of the uh, chat tonight is him. And nothing wrong with that. Me and me and Jersey red go go way back to the beginning. He was probably the first person to tune into one of these. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome. All right. Well, if nobody has any questions or anything, then I think we can wrap this up, but I'd like to thank everybody that came out tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, let me know if you like this type of content because uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did one where <laughs> I, I, I'm calling it show and tell because that's what somebody said it in the, uh, somebody in the comments called it that. But basically we just sat here for an hour and I showed the different guitars I own and stuff. We talked about it and it was probably the most viewed successful live stream that, that I've done. 
so I mean, uh, it just kind of seem it seems like sometimes when if I'm just like teaching how to play songs or licks and stuff like that, there doesn't seem to be as much interest or whatever. But yeah, I would really like it if uh, you know you guys tell me what it is that you'd like, you know, what kind of content you'd like to see, you know, because that's uh, what I'm here for, you know, for you guys. But yeah, thanks for for coming out. Uh, if you like this, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of fun. This is a lot more relaxed than, uh, like yesterday's live stream, you know, by the time it was over, I needed a volume. I was just like, it gave me anxiety. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, you know, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys, uh, I'm planning on being here tomorrow. Um, it will be one hour later. It um, it will be uh, instead of seven p.m. Eastern, it'll be eight p.m. Eastern. If if I do if I do come on, I mean I plan to, but you know, you never know. Uh, but yeah, I will. Um, uh, I will check, or I I will catch you guys uh, hopefully tomorrow. Thanks everybody. Have a great night.